celebrate the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. That we may celebrate the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sin. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now, Mighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life and everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to keep along with will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, my King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, and see our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants. Mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that may fervent and faithful and charity, they may ever be watchful and keep in your commands. This we pray in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God beside you who have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice, your mastery over all things makes you lean it to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved, and in those who you know you rebuke temperately. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attend you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O oh Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O oh Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. You are good and You, Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn toward me and have pity on me. Give me your strength to your servant. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
be with you. Yes. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Again, we have a long gospel if you care to sit down. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where did the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until the harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds. Yes, when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what was laying hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds of the evil are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvest is our angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin, and all evildoers. He will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. A couple of commercial announcements. There is a second collection today for grounds and maintenance. Uh, and as for signing up, it's not optional. And even though some churches might not be observing it, signing up is mandatory. So I'm going to follow that until I'm told otherwise here at St. Bridget's. Um, I think it makes sense. It's a great gospel. It comes out of Matthew 13, again, a, a chapter of parables. And again, it's the long form I picked. The original gospel was a very short snippet. And the church, and the, hand, the church taking this gospel, expanded it for their use and also applied the interpretation, the allegory. 
But on Jesus' lips, it was very, very short, just like last week. These simple parables speak to us. This one reminds me of a time when I was maybe three and a half, four years old. Uh, old enough to stand and walk, and grace came. So, my Italian grandmother did not have the occasion to mind my brother and I too often. Uh, she was a little frail, but uh, it fell upon her to mind my brother and I one summer day, probably just like this. And she was fond of gardening, vegetables, plants, flowers, you name it. So she was up there, and we wanted to be with her, naturally, to see what she was doing. And she said, we wanted to help. Can we help you? And she says, I don't think so. I'm doing some weeding. And we watched and watched and watched. And of course, you can't put off the kitten We said, well, let's, ha let's help. So my grandmother said, but you don't know what the weeds are. So we convinced her, that's a weed, that's a weed, that's a weed. And we pointed out all the weeds. She said, wow, not bad for a four-year-old. They know what the weeds are. So she left us on our own. She went back to her end of the garden, probably up towards the vegetables, and she left us down near the geraniums and that uh, other stuff, the silver stuff. I forget the name. Well, when she came back, guess what? That's right. The geraniums were gone, and so was in that silver stuff. What could she say? Well, I've never forgotten that. And that was the last time we helped her weed. <laughs> but you never outgrow it. I was up north uh, this week and I was doing some weeding. And I came to this thorny, light, pale, vine, branch thing that was going to wrap itself around my leg. And I cut it. And I cut another one and another one down the line got rid of them. A few more things with thorns. Those were weeds. So later that night, I'm walking on the street. Stunad. Guess what I cut? Wild roses. Who said that? Yeah, wild roses. They'll come back, and I'll be ready for them. You know, when we were in theology school, one of our professors said this, I'll we'll try to get it straight. The church has some that God has not. And God has some the church has not. Well, today's gospel helps us come to terms with the weeds in our life, the weeds that grow around us. The gospel, I think, is one that allows some forbearance for people to change, to repent. Even a weed has a flower. You just got to see the beauty in it. I guess back in these days, it was kind of common. If you wanted to mess up your fellow farmer, you would plant Darnell all through his field and ruin his crop and choke it off. And you get bankrupt. That was a common practice. But weeds also had a good reason, too. Uh, they, they would hold the hill and you could use them afterwards to burn. You could use them afterwards to burn. But Jesus is speaking here of weeds, that we have to be patient. I'd love to tear all the weeds out of my own life, my own weeds that grow in my heart, soul, and life. It's nice to do some housekeeping on our own, but there are weeds that grow around in our neighborhoods, at work, here and there and everywhere. We can't do that. We can't do that. Uh, we have to 
uh, exhibit some measure of forbearance, kindness, and all this towards those that we might consider to be the weeds in our life. Um, they're not necessarily all the time the children of the evil one. Uh, the, the allegory says that, but I'm just talking in another vein that um, take care of our own stuff at home first within us uh, and uh, worry about these other things later. It's because it's always hard to like, correctly identify weeds. I got a whole book on them. Uh, weeds of New England. <laughs> Anyways, uh, today's gospel does also help us deal with the problem of evil. That the kingdom of God is going to grow under duress. We are not going to have a weed-free existence, a weed-free world, a weed-free church. It's not going to happen. The kingdom was meant to grow this way. It will grow even stronger and harder in the presence of weeds. I guess it was meant to grow among weeds. We'll let God do the harvesting and the separating. That's his job. Beautiful image here that was not lost in the early people was this idea of the tree. And the birds of the sky will come and make their home in the branches. And I believe that's drawn out of the prophet Ezekiel. Could be Ezekiel 17. And they envisioned that the growth of God's reign, his kingdom, would be magnificent. We're going to let that tree grow that represents God's reign. The weeds will be down on the ground and the tree will be up here. So we shouldn't get discouraged at this at all. But the kingdom of God, the church, was meant to grow in this manner. But we will leave the separating of the wheat and the chaff uh, to the Lord himself. God bless you all. Please take it easy in this heat. Let us stand at the first octave. I believe in one God. Jesus Christ, and only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, like the light of true God, not true God, he got not made unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for us salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was imparted to the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and seeth the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess the baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. The life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
of this priests, the heart of this all sacrifice, that these become gifts acceptable to God of Almighty. O God, who with a perfect, one perfect sacrifice brought to completion various offerings of the law, except we pray this sacrifice from your faithful servants. Make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may be for the benefit and the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. You laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form mankind in your own image and set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder. To rule in your name over all the good made and praise you forever in your mighty works. Through Jesus Christ. And now with angels we praise you in joyful celebration we acclaim you. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are indeed holy, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and then to willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, the supper was ended. He took the chalice, and once more gave him thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured up for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and his chalice of salvation, giving thanks to the helpless worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partake in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Through the Lord your church spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Sean our Bishop, and all the clergy and the religious. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, walk with them in the light of your face. And mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Saint Bridget, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be poised to eternal life, and we may praise you and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We now pray in the words of Satan's taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, honor and death is in heaven. Give us this day our day. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And forgive us not into temptation. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Grant us peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we always may be free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, the 
coming to our Savior Jesus Christ, for the kingdom of power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Lord, for God and our sinful and the faith of your church, grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with you. I am God. Take away the sins of the world. Shall be healed. 